The edition of Shakespeare that we're going to be using in this course doesn't actually look a lot like the edition that was first published in Shakespeare's era, 1623. Actually, that's uh, a few years after Shakespeare was dead. It was put together by his uh, friends and, and theatrical colleagues, and it's known as the first folio. So what we have in front of us here is an image, a facsimile, of the uh, page from Shakespeare's the Tempest, which appeared in the first folio, and I thought I would just point out some of the differences in typography so that you get a flavor of what the original edition looked like. Now, one of the first things that maybe causes problems for people who are trying to read this edition now is this right here. You'll see that? That is actually an S. It looks more like an F to our eyes. It looks like an F with the crossbar broken off. But that was one of their forms of the letter F. And I say one of their forms because they actually had two forms and they used it in different ways or maybe I should say they tended to use it in different places. So if they needed an S in the middle of a word then they would use the form that I just uh, circled. That appears in the middle of the word boatswain or actually that word back then would have been pronounced bosun. On the other hand if they needed the letter S at the beginning of a word, they would use, as you can see there, they would use the S that looks like the S that we still use nowadays. Let's just look at a few others. You'll look here. That's the word master. And oh, here's the word speak with the familiar looking S there. I'll point out a few other things as we just look at this brief passage as well. Um, you'll see here the phrase fall to it. I'll read that whole passage. So the master, the boatmaster is saying, good. In other words, he's, that's a sort of a short form for saying, you know, good people, good men. So he's saying, good, speak to the mariners, fall to it, yearly, or we run ourselves aground. Be stir, be stir. The tempest is going on, of course, a storm. And so they have to act quickly or they're going to sink. That's, that's the, the context here. So with fall to it, what I'd like you to note is that we have fall, and that looks like how we would render the word fall now, and then to it. So T-O-O apostrophe T. I just think it's kind of interesting to note that they used apostrophes probably more liberally than we do to represent missing, missing letters. Uh, we do it primarily with a handful of contractions, words like can't or won't, but they did it much more frequently. So here we have fall to it. Uh, which, you know, the full form would be fall to it. Is there anything else to note here? Um, oh, here's another example of the apostrophe. So, uh, tend to the masters. Uh, again, it's th apostrophe masters instead of tend to the masters. So, that's enough of a brief overview of how typography was used a little bit differently in the early 17th century as compared with our own times. And uh, just keep that in mind as you are reading your modern edition of Shakespeare's plays.